So you mentioned that there are some other organizations that have emerged since the coalition was mm -hmm. founded. Are there any groups that you know of that are doing similar work to what you're doing, or is you more of a model that the rest of the country might be able to adopt? Yeah, I think it's a, a little bit of, of both. I mean, I think that um, there are certainly other organizations that focus on um, some of the work we do that's really looking at connecting health and social, um, mm -hmm. health leads um, and community catalyst mm -hmm. are um, organizations that come to mind. Um, right in New Jersey, I would say that New Jersey is a model of funding these types of coalitions. Mm -hmm. um, the coalition worked very hard um, about five years ago to get Medicaid ACO legislation passed. And as part of that legislation, coalitions in Camden, Trenton, and Newark were mm -hmm. all funded. Um, Congratulations, that's incredible. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And we all actually share um, a data platform. So mm -hmm. we all share the same health information mm -hmm. Um, exchange the same platform mm. and we all do convening of multiple stakeholders so mm. we convene uh, providers and social sector and we at the coalition have a very robust community advisory committee mm. um, and we all do patient navigation and sort of prototyping of mm. intervention so I would say New Jersey um, I don't know another state that has the set of coalitions that New Jersey has. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's, you know, really something here um, that, yeah, other, other, other places might want to take a look at. I certainly, there wasn't anything like this that I worked with in Philadelphia, and it was mm -hmm. one of the things that sort of brought me to Camden. So now that you've settled into the big chair, what, what are your goals? How, are you gonna, how would you like to build on the successes that the coalition has already had? Yeah. So, um, well, I was, I, you know, inherited um, all sorts of wonderful things when I, 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 I got to sit in this chair. I would say that, um, um, that, you know, just to say, I mean, the coalition really is a coalition. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, Jeff and I, Jeff Brenner and I have talked about this. He's still a great partner in the organization, but, you know, he was the, <clears throat> the sort of face of the coalition, but really the coalition was this group of staff and providers and, and organizations mm -hmm. that were really all working together. So I came in to that mm -hmm. and all of them are still here, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the things that we're thinking about um, as we move ahead is um, First, a lot of our work has turned from just being focused in Camden City to being regional. Mm -hmm. And that's because some of our providers have sort of expanded. And so they're now not just in Camden City, but they're in Burlington or they're in Gloucester. And really? so we are looking more broadly mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of our work. Um, we have a big grant from um, CMS uh, called mm -hmm. Accountable Health Communities. Mm -hmm. And so we are now doing social determinant screening mm -hmm. in about 16 sites. Some of them are in Camden, but many of them are outside of Camden. Mm -hmm. um, so we're sort of broadening our lens that way. Mm -hmm. um, the Medicaid ACO that I told you about, mm -hmm. um, that uh, program is sort of sunsetting mm -hmm. and uh, we and um, the Medicaid ACOs in Trenton and Newark and then um, a new one in Patterson are all coming online as what we're calling regional health hubs mm -hmm. and so we will be working with the state Medicaid agency mm -hmm. to continue to do um, data work convening mm -hmm. um, special navigation and prototyping mm -hmm. of um, interventions and also some quality work. Mm -hmm. So I would say the regional health hub status is also giving us this sort of population level lens mm -hmm. um, and um, responsibility mm -hmm. in terms of health. So that's one of the, the bigger changes that's happening. I think another one of the changes, this was certainly seated when Jeff was here which is our National Center for Complex Health and Social Needs. So mm -hmm. we launched a National Center for Complex Health and Social Needs back in 2016. We had um, money from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, mm -hmm. from AARP, 
um, from Atlantic Philanthropies at the time, um, and have continued that work and really broadened that work. Um, and the purpose of that center is to actually connect um, communities and providers like us, mm. but others around the country, mm. um, to really you know, tell their stories about complex care mm. and also to really build a field of complex care. Because mm. we know that we've been doing complex care in Camden. We know that a lot of providers and systems have been doing complex care around mm. the country. But now what we want to do is really establish it as a field. And so we are developing competencies about mm. what it means to do complex care, mm. um, you know, identifying exemplars, mm. um, identifying what kind of payment methods mm. and models you need to be able to do complex care. So, mm. um, you know, we are squarely, you know, working both regionally but nationally mm -hmm. um, in an effort to really develop a field. Mm -hmm. At our conference last year, the conference that's, that comes out of the National Center, we actually unveiled um, a blueprint for complex care. And the blueprint for complex care is a document that we did with the Institute for Health Improvement um, and also with the Center for Healthcare Strategies. Um, and with a, uh, a large group of advisors from around the country. Um, and that blueprint, it really sets forth 11 recommendations for what the field um, can be and what should be done to, de to develop that field. And the blueprint includes things like coming together and developing a set of competencies. So, um, you know, the blueprint is available on our website. It's available for everybody. We think it has advice in it right now that health systems or communities can use to get started in thinking about complex care. Um, you know, one of the things that we found is that there are a lot of um, communities or providers doing complex care, but they don't call it that. And so one of the things that the blueprint does is really give us uh, a framework and a shared language to be able to talk about what we're doing.